All right, we're gonna add just uh, we're gonna we're gonna add just one more idea to our uh, root position motion of a fourth and a fifth, and then we're gonna take a little look at some of the practicing we're doing on our homework. So let's first review what we already know, the two options that we have uh, looked at. So with root movement of a fourth, which we know is equivalent to a fifth, we really have looked at two options so far. So the one on the left uh, is the with common tone usage option. So if we look here, we're going from a C chord to a G chord. And we can see that the tenors are holding down the fourth on G is common between those two chords. The one on the right, though, we can see that this is not happening, right? So the common tone, G, is not being taken. And we'll look at why. Uh, we'll get a good example uh, in a bit. But suffice to say, it's not happening here. And so what that means is that if we do use the common tone, we find that our other two voices are going to move in parallel sixths or parallel thirds if it was voiced differently. Remember, parallel three, parallel six, those are great. It's not parallel motion that's a problem. It's parallel perfect intervals, which this sounds a little too stuck versus the really fluid motion of parallel sixths parallel thirds. So if we use the common tone, that's what's going to happen. If we don't use the common tone, which is this one on the right, sorry here, forgot about my little animations. So there's our common tone, there's our parallel sixths. If we don't use the common tone, the other three voices, the upper voices, are going to move in similar motion, meaning they all go the same direction. So here's tenor, alto on E, soprano on C, they're going in similar motion because they're all moving the same direction, different distances, right? See, the sopranos move by a step, the altos move by a third, right? So that's a different distance, but it's the same direction. And they're all going to the nearest member of the next chord. So C in the soprano is going to D, can't get any closer than C to D. E is going to G. There's no member of the G chord, G, B, D, between E and G. And the tenors are going from G to B. There's no member of the chord between those two, except for if it stayed on the common tone, but we already said they're not going to do that. So those are the two types of motion that we already know, and those are by far the main two. But we do want to have one more option in our back pocket in case we see something a little bit farther afield. And this mainly has to do with a change in probably the melody. So let's compare. We're here in F major. So the thing about the first one, which makes use of the common tone, in the alto voice, right? So the thing about the first one, is that it's super smooth, which is, of course, the main positive about it. But in, on, the same, on the same hand, the thing that's not as good about it as it potentially could be is that it's really, really smooth. So it kind of limits leaping. So if you wanted to have a melodic leap, this one's not going to do it for you because we know one voice has to stay on the common tone, and the other two voices are going to move in parallel motion by step. So it's really smooth, but that's not always, always the best thing. We may have a situation where there needs to be a big jump, and that's probably going to be because the melody that we're working with has a jump. People have a tendency to write melodies that want to do something like that. So we want to have a way to have that jump from a to D in the melody because it clearly sounds good. We want to have an opportunity to write good voice leading around it. So if we are going to have a big leap, a jump of a fourth in a melody, we want to make sure that we take the common tone so that we can see the thing that's consistent about both of these is that the altos are staying on the common tone. 
voice of the altos, whether it's the smooth one on the left, or whether it's the slightly more exciting one on the right, the altos are still that firm foundation just holding things down, which is awesome. So if we're going to have a leap of a fourth, take the common tone. And then the others, the other voices, this is kind of strange, they kind of trade notes from what they should do quote unquote, should do in common tone voice leading. So when we took the common tone over here, the sopranos went from A to B flat, and the tenors went from C to D. And so if they trade, that means the sopranos are gonna end up on D, right? So D from the tenors has been traded up here to the sopranos, and the B flat that the sopranos should have, or sorry, the B flat that the sopranos should have, is traded down to the tenors. So they end up with the opposite notes of what they had. And the beauty is that, yes, the sopranos have a bit of a jump, but everybody else, not counting the basses, because our basses do their own thing, the alto voice is keeping that common tone, holding down the fort, and the tenors are still going in stepwise motion. So it still maintains a really, really smooth overall motion between these two chords, despite the fact that the soprano voice gets to do something a little bit more exciting, which is really awesome to be able to have that, uh, have that option. Okay, so that is, oh, well, here's a little, I always forget about my little animations. I did it with the mouse, but just so you see, B flat from the soprano ends up in the tenors. The D note that should have been in the tenor ends up in the soprano. So let's, uh, let's take a peek at the homework sheet that we're working on here, uh, and then we'll do a little practice from it. So this is what it looks like, uh, and we're going to talk about the back or the second page of it, uh, not right now. But what we can see is we've got all these little exercises on this front side of the sheet. Some are long, some are fairly short, um, where we are given a starting voicing for a chord, and then we have the bass line and the soprano part, and we need to do the part writing for the rest of it. Um, it says here uh, that you should label which of the methods that you used. You don't need to do that on these lines up here. I will know what method you're using because I'll be able to see it, so you don't need to do that. Um, but it, it's still worth uh, going about this in a pretty methodical manner and thinking about those techniques. So I want to walk us through some of the things that could come up here. So let's go into some uh, notation software and just make sure that we are feeling super comfortable with what to do. So here we go. We're going to look at number one, number two, and number six from the sheet just to make sure that we're super, super ready to go with this. So here we are for the first one. We're in C minor. And we start on this five chord. You can see we've got the leading tone B natural, the leading tone of C raised in the tenor voice here. So that's really important. But let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Now, one technique that's really important for doing this is making sure that we look at the Roman numerals so that we know exactly which notes we want to write, and we keep track of what role, what member of the chord they all are so that we can keep our doubling straight. So we just left a GBD chord, and this is the kind of thing where you, there's going to be elements of this where you will think I'm suggesting that you be a little too specific, but it's really important to be as clear as you can so you can see all of these aspects. So the first thing say two things about what I just did. First thing is make sure you are spelling it root third fifth. Write it in its triadic tight spelling so that you can know that G is the root and we should expect there to be two G's. We should expect G to be doubled and it is here in the bass and in the alto. Then we have one third in the tenor voice and one-fifth in the soprano voice. So that keeps us in line. The second thing that I did, and you could do this with a natural symbol, not by writing nat, banat, is to make sure that you're writing the specific note that you're using. Because B natural 
is a very different note than B flat. And if you just wrote B here, I would wonder, do you know that it should be B flat, right? I know it seems like it's a little pedantic, it may be a little just overly uh, detail oriented, but you want to get in the habit of spelling these notes exactly how you want them now. We're in a period here where we're pretty much only using notes from the key outside of keys, you know, outside of leading tones that we're raising. But that's not always going to be the case. So you want to make sure you practice doing that now rather than uh, finding yourself in trouble with because you haven't really thought about specific pitches. You just trusted the key signature uh, down the line, which is, is going to be really problematic. So I'm going to spell my notes out really specifically. So here we go. We're in C minor, and we need a one chord. What three notes do we need? We need C, because it's the root. We need E, but we, know, we don't need E. We need E flat as the third, and G is the fifth, right? So that's really helpful. And this way we can see, okay, what do we have already, and what do we need? So we've already got C in the bass. Do we need any more Cs? Well, yeah, we do, because we're going to double the root. So even though, even though we already have C, we're not going to cross it out because we still need more of them because we want to double the root. What about E flat, the third of the chord? Do we double the third? Well, no, we don't. So that means I'm going to put this in parentheses here because we don't need any more E flats. We've already got one third. We don't double it, so we don't want any more. And that means that we still need a G because that's the fifth. So we've got... C, E flat, and G, but we've already got C and E flat, so we're just going to need one more root, which is C, and one more third, or sorry, one more fifth, which is G. So the next step here, because this is root position motion of a fourth slash a fifth, they're the same thing, is to find out what the common tone is. So if we look at this G major chord in the C minor triad, hopefully we can see pretty quickly that G is the common tone. So which voice... Which voice here is singing G? Well, the altos have it. And so what we're going to do is if we want to hold the common tone, we need to make sure that we keep the note G in the same voice. So the altos have it here. So I'm going to put G. Oops, a slight little mistake there. I want to make sure my stems are in good shape. So I'm going to put G here in the alto voice. And now I don't need any more Gs, so I can cross that out. And it makes it really easy to see that what's the last note we need? The last note we need is C. We need to double our root, which the tenor is the only voice left. So I'm going to put that there, just like this. And if you look at what we've got, we started on this voicing. And we kept the altos on the common tone. And what we ended up with was these lovely parallel thirds, or parallel tenths, but we just call them the thirds, B to D to C to E flat in the tenor and soprano voices. So we kept the common tone, kept our doubling in mind, doubling the root, and we made sure to cross off the notes as we wrote them so that we don't accidentally have like too many three of something or missing a note. Right? So it's important to be super specific. Okay. Let's come over here to number two. We're in G major for this one. And we're not going to go all the way through this one. I just want to talk about one little element of this one. Uh, pardon the rests here. So we're in G. We're starting on a two chord, which is A, C, E. Now look, I know this seems like I'm being way too specific, but I'm writing notes that are already here so that we absolutely can keep track of the common tones because that's a, such a central technique here. So going from an A, C, E chord, and we're going to go right to this five chord here. Five in G, G, A, B, C, D is D. And what do you know? We've got D in the bass. So we're going to a D chord. How do we spell the D chord in G major? Well, D is the root, right? What's the third? F sharp is the third, and A is the fifth. So we're going from a D, F sharp, A chord, or sorry, we're going from an A, C, E chord, A minor, 
to a D F sharp A chord, which is five. And that's what we're going to do. We're not going to worry about going the rest of the way. And the reason I want to point this out is because something interesting is going to come up. So we know, because we saw over here, that our first step is to investigate the common tone. And we can see here, okay, common tone, the A is the root of A minor and is the fifth of a D major chord. So A is our common tone. So we're ready to go. We're going to take that common tone. And here we go. Who's got it? The sopranos do. Oh, but what's the problem? The sopranos, who are the note or the voice that's singing the common tone, aren't going to do it because they have a melody that's already set. We can't just change the melody because we want to keep the common tone. We sort of have to follow the musical structure of the melody. So what that means is that in this case, we know what the common tone is, but we can't make use of it. We can't use that technique because the voice that should keep the common tone isn't going to let us. So instead, what do we do if we can't take the common tone? Well, all the voices should move in similar motion, the upper voices. And so the soprano is already moving downwards from A to F sharp. So we should have the other upper voices, the altos and the tenors, do the same thing. Move downwards, similar motion, to the nearest chord member. So let's do the alto voice first. So the altos start here on E, right? They're on the fifth of this. Oh, okay, good, sorry. I almost made a big mistake there, sorry. So they're on the fifth of this A, C, E chord on E. So if they're gonna move downwards, What's the closest downwards note in this D F sharp A chord? Well, it's D, right? Because E downwards to D is just a step. E to D is the closest note of the next chord. So now let's do the Sopranos. They're on C. What's the closest note downwards in this next chord in D F sharp A? It's A, right? That's the closest one. So there you go. So we went from this to that. And we used this voicing because the common tone wasn't available. Now, here's one last thing I want to mention with this. We can use our knowledge of doubling to check our work, to make sure we've done it right, and to figure out along the way what notes we still need. Because we started, right, we didn't have, let's sort of do this. Yeah, we started with it looking like this, right? So we didn't have an alto note and we didn't have a tenor note. So we could look here and say, okay, what do we already have and what do we need? We've got one root and one third. Do we need any more thirds? No, we don't need any more thirds. We've got all the F sharps we need. So we can cross that out to remind ourselves that we shouldn't add any more of those. Similarly, we should look at the root. Do we need any more roots? Yes, we do. We need to make sure that we have another root there. So then when we added in our alto note, D, that takes care of the doubled root, right? We don't need the note D anymore because we have that note in the bass, and now we have that in the alto, which means that A is our last note, and so when we added A in the tenor part here, that took care of the fifth. So we made sure in doing this that our doubling of two roots, one third, and one fifth was taken care of, which is a nice way to check our work to make sure that we're using these techniques right. All right, let's come down here. This is number six, all right? So we're in A minor, and we start with this nice little pickup on a five chord, and then we're going to this kind of motion. So again, we've got the outer voices, bass and soprano, but we need to fill in the inner voices, alto and tenor. So let's look here. This first chord, this is an E, G sharp, B chord, and we're going to go to a one chord in A minor, which is ACE, right? So we're going from ACE. Again, take note that I'm writing it, I'm spelling it, 
in triad order, root on the bottom, third, fifth. That way I always know what I need to double. I always know what every member of the chord is doing. So here we've already got a root. We don't need any more thirds, so I can put parentheses or stri strike out C because I don't need any more thirds, right? So that's good. What's the common tone between the E major chord and A minor? Hopefully we see really quickly. It's E. Which voice is singing E? It's those pesky tenors. So I'm going to keep E in this voice. And what do you know? Keep that common tone, which means that now we don't need any more E's in this chord. right? So I'm going to say no more E's, which means all we need to do is double the root, which is A. And look at that. The sopranos would, or sorry, the altos would be happy to do that because that resolves the leading tone G sharp to A. So our first motion, we just took the common tone, super smooth motion there from the five chord to the one chord. Now, something should stand out here though, moving from this one chord to the four chord, and it's what happens in the sopranos. We've got C up to F, a jump of a fourth. That we just learned that we've got a new technique for that. So let's first spell out this D minor chord, which is four. So it's a DFA chord, again, always writing the root on the bottom. We've already got one root, so we're going to need another one. But we have F in the soprano, so we don't need any more thirds. So I'm getting rid of that, right? So what did we say? When we have this voice leading that involves a jump of a fourth, bump of a bump, jump of a fourth, what was the, the bedrock? Of that technique. What did we still do? We still kept the common tone. And if we look, the common tone, we've got A, <laughs> this is hard to see, A to A, that's our common tone. So which voice has A? It's the altos. So we're just going to keep the altos on A so that they can do the common tone. It's important to have something really stable while the other voice is doing something exciting. And I know this isn't like exciting, exciting, you know, there's no pyrotechnics going on here, but in the context that we're working with, a jump of a fourth is about as, ex as exciting as we've used so far. So let's, let's uh, run with it. So that means we've now got a third, one, we've got a fifth, one of them, we don't need any more. So we just need to double the root, which the tenors would be more than happy to do. And again, just by following these techniques, we keep that doubling intact. And I cannot stress enough, cannot stress enough that making sure the doubling is consistent is the way that you, A, can make sure that you're on the right track, and B, is the central element in making these techniques work. Because the goal here is to use techniques that make part writing like this go smoothly, not just for the music, but for you. This is not the kind of thing that you want to spend an eternity on. It's not the most exciting part of the music. So we want to make sure that this can be a simple and effective musical foundation. And part of that is using the techniques that are there. These notes will work in a balanced, musical, smooth, singable way if you do it this way, so that then you can spend your musical attention on the elements that you want to to really spruce it up. You don't want to spend forever on the things that should be simple or that someone else has already worked out. Spend your energy on the new things, on the exciting things, the ways that you're bringing yourself into the music, right? So doubling the root, as simple as that sounds, is the gateway into making these techniques work for you. If you do not double the root, you're going to be not able to actually effectively make use of these techniques. Okay, let's do this last chord change. We're going back to a one chord. We're in A minor, so that's another ACE chord. We've got A in the bass, but we still need another one because we're going to double the root. And we've got E in the soprano, the fifth. So we don't need any more fifths. So what we need to add is a root and a third. And let's see, what's common between these two chords, the D minor chord and the A chord? It's A again, right? We've had a whole string of A common tones. So A is common. Altos, I mean, you got, we, gotta, we should just send every alto in our life a gift basket here. 
because they're holding that common tone down, right? So they've been leading tone to A, A, A. I mean, somebody's got to do it. Thank the alto in your life for singing that common tone. So the last one, now that we've figured out that altos are the thing that makes the world go round, uh, we've got doubled root. We've got a fifth. So we just need a third, which is C. And the tenors are here to sing that third. So let's go ahead and write that. And would you look at that? We kept our doubling in mind. We kept the common tone. And these tenors and sopranos, tenors on D and sopranos on F, have the most lovely, smooth part writing. There. So this whole little exercise started on this five chord. And we had the, the, ten, the tenor singing the common tone. Then we get this lovely jump of a fourth before that nice resolution to the A minor one chord there. And that's how you do it. So make sure you're looking for those things, whether it's to use the common tone or, as we saw in number two, instances where we cannot use the common tone because that voice is doing something else and we have to adjust by using similar motion. So there you go.